Hello, I am Deepak Gupta from Patent Yogi Weekly News, a show that provides quick updates on the recent activity in the patent world. Apple was ordered to pay $533 million after a federal jury found that iTunes infringed three patents owned by a patent licensing firm SmartFlash. SmartFlash asked for $852 million in damages, while Apple said it was worth $4.5 million at most. The patents used in the suit related to accessing and storing downloaded songs, videos and games. SmartFlash has also filed patent infringement lawsuits against Samsung, HTC and Google. According to a Stanford intellectual property expert, patent trolls actually benefit inventors and the innovation economy. Research conducted by Stephen Haber, a Stanford political science professor, focused on why inventors choose to sell their patents to PAEs, rather than license their technologies directly to manufacturers. Without patent trolls, Haber said, inventors would be more limited in the innovation ecosystem. According to Haber, increase in lawsuits reflects a dynamic economy. Haber further suggests that America's patent system is the best in the world, and that policymakers should not rely on claims that patent trolls and lawsuits discourage innovation. The GPS device maker Garmin has prevailed in a fitness patent dispute with Pacing Technologies. Garmin is seeing high growth in its fitness business with its smartphone application, which syncs music to a user's workout. Here are statistics for the patent litigations filed this week. It is time for the international news. ZTE welcomed the withdrawal of three patent claims by Ringo in UK. The discontinuation of Ringo's claims concerning three European patents followed ZTE's efforts to demonstrate that the patents asserted against it are not infringed. A Nestle patent for mechanism in its Nespresso coffee machines has been ruled invalid by a German court. The case was brought by Ethical Coffee Company, which claimed a new mechanism in Nespresso machines stopped its capsules from working properly in the machines. Ethical Coffee Chief Executive Jean-Paul Gaylor, a former Nespresso chief executive said, with this decision, the last patent that could allow Nestle to make annoyance lawsuits, the kind of lawsuits they know they can't win, but do to get the competition to waste time, has disappeared. He also said that he plans to seek compensation in key markets across Europe, hopefully close to 1 billion euros. Indian government has extended patent subsidy scheme to all startups set up anywhere in India. Earlier, only those firms whose research and development was recognized by the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research were eligible. The government will consider five applications in a financial year for reimbursement from a single applicant. Under the scheme, rupees 1,500,000 per invention or 50% of the total expenses incurred in filing and processing a patent application up to grant, whichever is less, will be reimbursed. Awesome patents published recently, Amazon filed for a patent for 3D printers mounted within trucks, which could then print customers' purchases on the fly and deliver them instantly. A customer places an order for a Toyota. The order is received at Amazon Data Center, which sends 3D manufacturing instructions to the Amazon delivery truck. 3D printer installed in the truck, prints out the Toyota. While the truck is on the way to customer's delivery address. This way customers get yes. their orders delivered faster. Ford filed a patent for a new car design that would allow users to remove certain car parts, such as a jack and headrest, and reassemble them into a bicycle. This could help car owners beat traffic. Boeing patented fighter jets to launch micro-satellites into space. The patented airborne satellite launch vehicle allows Boeing to launch satellites from any airport around the world. The patented vehicle includes a first-stage supersonic aircraft and a second-stage hypersonic aircraft. The vehicle is mounted on a carrier aircraft.
the carrier transports the launch vehicle to an altitude L1, releases the launch vehicle, and returns to the takeoff site. Next, the supersonic aircraft begins operation, transports the hypersonic vehicle to an altitude L2, separates from the hypersonic vehicle, and is automatically guided back to a landing site. Then, the hypersonic aircraft transports the rocket to a launch altitude L3, and releases the rocket. The hypersonic aircraft is then automatically guided back to a landing site. Next, the rocket is launched at the launch altitude L3. The rocket carries the satellite to lower Earth orbit. All the components including the rocket return safely to the ground and may be reused for launching more satellites. This launch system will bring down the costs threefold and usher in the new age of satellite communication. Thanks for liking and sharing the video. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the red button to receive updates on new videos published every week. If you are viewing this on a mobile device, please find the subscription link in the description below. Until next time, keep innovating and keep patenting.